show around the world. My name's Mighty. I'll be your host for this evening. Well, this week I decided to do something a little bit different. Not the typical show. Actually kind of a co-op with my boy, and it should be your boy, Paul from Sucker Punch Productions, also known as the MMA Punching Bag. We did a little Skype. I do want to say in advance, I'm sorry. You know, it's kind of a last minute. I don't have all the equipment to do the best Skyping. Is that a word like when you Google something, you can Skype? Okay, so that's, anyways, we did it. He's in Canada, I'm in Cali, and he's on the east side of Canada. So he's like way over there, like, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, did a little show together. Wanted to do a little co-op with the crazy man himself. So take a look. I hope you enjoy it. And that's what we're doing this week. Check it out. Welcome, Fight Fans, for a special edition of MMA Made this week. We have the one, the only, the crazy man himself, Paul. Sucker Punch Productions, also known as the Anime Punching Bag. What's up, Paul? What's going on, Mighty? Thanks for having me on board tonight. Uh, I've been looking forward to this all day. I love your jackassery. That goes on on your show. <laughs> jackassery is what we do best, my friend. Nice, nice. I'm always too serious on mine. So, yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. All right, you know what? Let's just get right into it. Why don't you tell all 11 people that are watching the show who you are and what you are about? Former professional fighter, well, actually, former washed-up punching bag of a fighter. I helped people get to their dreams while I went to the ER. Um, I'm in the entertainment industry from acting, stunt work, comedian, and putting myself in situations where I like my uh, a rush that almost puts my life on the line. But we'll tell you more about that later. All right, all right. You know what? Let's just get right into it then. This past weekend, we had UFC... Nashville fight night. Um, I don't want to talk about the whole card. There was a lot of good fights on there. Some were decent, some were good, some were bad decisions. Let's talk about the first one. Michael Johnson against Darius co-main event. What happened? What happened? Armed robbery by the judges. Once Horrible, again, dude. Once again, we find having boxing judges or People that aren't too familiarized in MMA from jiu-jitsu striking, everything, and they're running our they're running our game, it, it, and this it's setting people's careers back. And you know, it's, it's a mental game. So if a fighter you know gets set back from a, a, a stupid decision, and I'm going to call it hashtag stupid decisions. <laughs> uh, I like that. Yeah. No. So. Now, what do you think is going to happen to this guy? Because obviously, even though the brass know what would have happened at that fight, I would give the third round, third round to him. But Johnson had first and second for sure. I I would agree. Even uh, Uncle Dana was pissed off, and he was, you know, calling it out. And, of course, Twitter was on fire, and everyone was speaking their mind. And I, I can't disagree that Johnson was robbed of the decision. I know Uncle Dana says, don't let go on the hands of the judges. But, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. You get these fights that are just so equally matched. You're at the highest level of competition, right? UFC is the pinnacle of MMA. So when you have these two top-notch fighters that are going at it, you can't always finish the fight. It's not going to always happen. No, no, especially when they are similar in fighters. Uh, same style, you know, and... No, that was that was just armed robbery at its finest, and if I was a judge, I would have handed down a five-year sentence. <laughs> well, you know, and, and what we normally see is these judges that have a boxing background, because let's face it, boxing's been around forever in comparison to MMA. So you get these judges that have boxing background, so you typically see this thing, not always, but typically when you have a wrestler or a jiu-jitsu guy and they're, they don't understand that game, but this was a striking match. This was a striking match. I don't. I don't get it. Uh, I do. Uh, <laughs> the amount of money that 
We'll, we'll, we'll use the UFC because we're talking about them. The amount of money that the UFC is definitely now making since the new Reebok deal, oh, can you not invest? If you're saying that you are you are the top-notch league for mixed martial arts, then you are the person that is supposed to set an example. Spend some money, grab Hoist Gracie, grab Dwayne Ludbang, and grab a top-notch wrestler, hire them for three hours, and get them to show these judges what to look for in the fights. Then people might not, people won't be getting robbed as much. So what we have here is there's some politics involved because every state that is sanctioned for MMA, they have their own athletic commission. Then you get places like in China where UFC went to earlier this year, wherever it was, and then they, they didn't have an actual MMA athletic commission. They have the athletic commissions for boxing or the Olympics. So the UFC got to bring the Vegas athletic commission or their athletic commission, whatever you want to call it. So. Um, I totally hear what you're saying, and I wish there was a unified, like a global athletic commission or something of that nature. I don't know if that's even possible, but maybe at least a North American? I don't know. We never thought it would be possible for the sport to be legalized. And when I fought in Ontario, when I fought here back at home, I never got to fight in Ontario because it was, it just finally passed last year, a year and a half ago, two years maybe. And yeah, so something needs to be done and done fast because it's not only the fans that are getting robbed, it's the fighters. Yeah. I mean, it is one of the fastest growing sports in the world, honestly. I mean, it's barely a little over 20 years old, and it's it's a, it's a big sport. For sure. All right, let's move on to the main event. We got uh, Glover Teixeira, the Brazilian, against your boy, OSP. I like to say your boy because that's my thing. Even if you don't like him, I just throw it at you anyway. And then you can either accept him or decline him. Well, I'm one of those guys that will always take a runt in in my life. So <laughs> if it's a stray dog or a stray fighter that you want to throw on me, I'll take it in. <laughs> so um, what are your thoughts on that? I, I Personally, I didn't think it was going to go the way it did. I thought it would be a more of a stand-up game. But there was a lot of elements in this fight that I wasn't really expecting too much. What are, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are, you know, uh, Glover, he played a smart game. Even though he can hit and he can knock you out, we've seen it. But he's also a champion on the ground in jiu-jitsu. So, OSP, his ground game is good, but it's not up to that standard. Yeah. And I think the pressure that he put on OSP broke him physically. Uh, In that sense, like, you saw he was gassed OSP was gassed and do I think maybe it was an early stoppage I'm not there as a ref but I I thought maybe he could have taken a little bit more damage so uh, I think it was a great matchup and when you get two guys that can knock each other out we've seen it in the past we've seen them go the distance but this even though it didn't go the distance it was looking that way yeah yeah, no, I, I thought it was probably going to go all five before before the uh, fight came to an end. Um, any other honorable mentions on that card you want to bring up, or is it, it was an it was an all around well car, uh, good card. I, um, there was a couple boring fights, uh, but most of them they, they were decent. And who I, one thing I learned I used to be a keyboard warrior before I actually jumped into the sport it was me being a keyboard warrior in my big mouth that got me into the sport <laughs> um, it doesn't matter if, if it's a boring fight or if it's a downright crappy fight those guys are in there they're doing what they love to do and they're getting people like you and I to watch what they're doing so either way unless Unless you get moves like, uh, what was that guy's name? Paul Daly, that sucker punch to Koscheck. As much as I would love to headbutt Koscheck, <laughs> you know, there's there's some there's some moves out there that you shouldn't be pulling. But yeah, no, I I, I very will randomly not like a fight just because it was boring. Okay, you know what? I, I'm glad you brought up Paul Daly because actually, I just heard today. The Dynamite card in San Jose, the Bellator, which is like part glory, part MMA, 
Paul Daly just got signed to fight uh, Fernando Gonzalez is someone I actually got to meet this year. We've become friends a little bit, so that's exciting. But more importantly, they announced Jose Aldo against Conor McGregor today. The that, Vegas. That is going to be an amazing fight. And, you know, I've been one of those guys ever since I first kind of got a feel for him. Uh, Conor McGregor was on... Bobby Razik's uh, show shift. Yes, I saw that actually. It really, it, Bobby Razik's a, a legend in his own mind, and I owe it to James Gavsey for the introduction there. But Conor McGregor and Jose Aldo, everybody made fun of Jose for backing out because of a rib injury. You know, this is that time where you can say, hey, keyboard warriors, if he had a rib injury, and he got kicked with a rib that was already, you know, either fractured or whatever the case may be. Imagine that rib just snapping and going into a lung, kidney. So, you know, get off the guy's back. He's one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world, and he has been for a long time. But I think we're going to see a changing of the guard. And we might be seeing a little Irish boy doing it. <laughs> you know what? I won't, I won't say what my pick is yet, but we'll just say I'm probably agreeing with you on this. Nice. <laughs> okay, so enough with that. We'll get, definitely have a plenty of time to talk about that because we've got about five months before that fight happens but this weekend uh ufc no ufc no bellator because that's the end of the month no world series of fighting but you have something going on this weekend that i think you should be talking about right now please tell us what's going on this weekend well, to be honest, uh, the reason why there is no uh, Bellator card or UFC card, I um, had a conference call with Dana and Scott about, I don't know, probably about six months ago to let them know what I was doing. They said, uh, well, we can't show up because we don't want to show up for a homicide, but it, it may make some great ratings that night, so uh, we'll give you the Saturday and Sunday this week. I, I've got a back to school bull ride is what I've hashtagged it on social media and I've, te I've teamed up with Children's Aid Foundation I was a foster kid I was a jerk I was a complete jerk to these people nobody ever wanted me they kept kicking me out and I, I understand why now I would have kicked myself out <laughs> and this is my way of giving back to that but it's also for anti-bullying and uh, like my partner James Gazzi and Renegade's Guide to Anti-Bullying I figured there's no better way to stand up to bullying than to take on a two-ton bull. That's that's all you, baby. That is all you. I don't have to last five minutes getting knocked out or punched out or choked out. It's eight seconds. Yeah, I might get gored, but fortunately enough, I live in Ontario and we got great health coverage. So <laughs> until that changes, I might continue to do some reckless, reckless danger adventures. But, you know, it's for the kids. We got 70,000 kids in our area here that are living in poverty. The, the foster families only get so much for them a month, plus they have their own families and kids. So it's hard. And some of these kids don't even have backpacks or luggage to when they leave their houses to go to another house. So not, o not only are we looking for money, but we're looking for school supplies. Like yourself, you donated five backpacks. There's five kids going with some new backpacks. Thanks, MMA mate. Oh, by the way, that's a nice shirt you're wearing. What is that, Mama's Boy? You like that right there? Yeah, Mama's Boy's been a big supporter of this uh, back-to-school bull ride, too. But, uh, yeah, this Saturday and Sunday and Friday, Ram Rodeo Tour sets into Grand Grand River, and the Grand River Rodeo is going to take off, and uh, uh, I'll be riding a bull on Saturday or Sunday. And, unfortunately, I don't get to find out what bull I'm getting until about an hour before the event starts, so uh, hopefully it won't be. You can't even go and try to coddle it and whisper sweet nothing into its ear. I'm going to be straight up with you. About a month and a half ago, I went to uh, bull riding school with Braemar's Rodeo, and these bulls don't like people. They don't, they, especially sitting on them. I've seen these bulls where they'll walk up to you and let you scratch your side, but as soon as you sit on these guys, it's like prom night. You know how it was so good, but it was so wrong? Yes. That's how it ended up turning out. But, yeah, you know, check it out on all social media. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, MMA Punching Bag, Facebook, Sucker Punch Productions. My website is suckerpunchproductions.ca. 
guys, this is an amazing event, and it's people like you and me that is bringing knowledge. And knowledge is power. Without knowledge, we have no power to fight anything. We help kids out, sick kids, cancer, anything like that. So it takes people like us to make that difference. Well, you know what? I totally appreciate you coming on the show this week, Paul. You're a stand-up guy. You're a little bit crazy getting on these bulls, but uh, but I, I definitely respect it. I wish you the best of luck this weekend. I wish I could be there this weekend up in Canada to watch you, but soon enough, soon enough, we will be getting together. Uh, not so much the, the via Skype. We'll be getting together, hanging out, doing some stuff. All right, well, that's what we did for the show this week. I want to thank you so much for joining me this evening on a Thursday, or maybe you're not watching it on Thursday. We come out on Thursday, but maybe you're not watching it. So I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I'll be back next week to bring you something new and exciting. As always, have a great night. Thanks for watching. Mighty out.